In order to write this book, I knew, to finish this book, I, I had to write this poem. And to write this poem, I knew I had to take my father to Monticello. My father took me to Monticello the first time over 20 years ago, and a lot of things have changed uh, in that time. My father and I used to argue um, for years uh, about uh, our positions on Jefferson. Um, and if, you, if you've read any of the Met Gordon Reed's books, um, then you know I ultimately won the fight. It is actually now the official position of the Jefferson Foundation that Jefferson fathered at least two of Sally Hemings' children. Now, because that, that, that acknowledgement is made at Monticello, the kinds of conversations that go on on Monticello uh, among tour groups has also changed. Enlightenment. In the portrait of Jefferson that hangs at Monticello, he is rendered two-toned, his forehead white with illumination, a lit bulb, the rest of his face in shadow, darkened as if the artist meant to contrast his bright knowledge, its dark subtext. By 1805, when Jefferson sat for the portrait, he was already linked to an affair with his slave. Against a backdrop blue and ethereal, a wash of paint that seems to hold him in relief, Jefferson gazes out across the centuries, his lips fixed as if he's just uttered some final word. The first time I saw the painting, I listened as my father explained the contradictions, how Jefferson hated slavery, though out of necessity, my father said, had to own slaves that his moral philosophy meant he could not have fathered those children, would have been impossible, my father said. For years, we debated the distance between word and deed. I'd follow my father from book to book, gathering citations, listen as he named, like a field guide to Virginia, each flower and tree and bird, as if to prove a man's pursuit of knowledge is greater than his shortcomings, the limits of his vision. I did not know then the subtext of our story, that my father could imagine Jefferson's words made flesh in my flesh, the improvement of the blacks in body and mind in the first instance of their mixture with the whites, or that my father could believe he'd made me better. When I think of this now, I see how the past holds us captive, its beautiful ruin etched on the mind's eye. My young father, a rough outline of the old man he's become, needing to show me the better measure of his heart, an equation writ large at Monticello. That was years ago. Now we take in how much has changed. Talk of Sally Hemings, someone asking, how white was she? Parsing the fractions as if to name what made her worthy of Jefferson's attentions, a near white quadroon mistress, not a plain black slave. Imagine stepping back into the past, our guide tells us then, and I can't resist whispering to my father, this is where we split up. I'll head around to the back. When he laughs, I know he's grateful I've made a joke of it, this history that links us, white father, black daughter, even as it renders us other to each other.